The second method the appraiser could use is what we call the cost approach. The cost approach is used on a property or a building where there is a either a new build or there's no history of properties around there, like a new housing addition. This would be the method. If you remember back, we talked about a construction loan and I said that there's no house to appraise, so they would use the plans. That might be the cost approach. And there are five steps to the cost approach. One is you would definitely split out the difference because there's a value for the land and then there is a value for just the structure. And that has to be done because the very first thing you do when dealing with the cost to build a project is deduct the value of the land. Land does not depreciate. You cannot use the depreciation formula on land. You can only use it on structures. And if you look at most states in their taxing document, they actually have it split out for you. Here's a value for the land and a value for the building. That is done because in this cost approach, once we estimate the value of the land, it would come out of this calculation. We're gonna do an example and figure it out. The second thing or third thing is you gotta determine the depreciation. We're gonna do some math for depreciation. And depreciation is caused by one of three items. Uh, it's either caused by physical deterioration, external depreciation, or functional obsolescence. We'll talk about each one of those. The fourth thing you're going to do is then whatever depreciation amount you calculated, you would subtract that off the structure. Back here to this number two, or letter B, but because we've already subtracted out the value of the land and you cannot figure depreciation on land. Then when you get the new value, because you've deducted the uh, depreciation, now you add the value of the land back in to get the total. Okay. So let's look at this. There are three types of depreciation. We mentioned them earlier. The first one is called physical, uh, said number four, should have been number one. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Physical deterioration. Hey, the roof has gone bad. The house is 30 years old. That roof is physically bad due to normal wear and tear. Well, the good thing about physical deterioration is it could be curable. Just put a new roof on it and you fixed that problem. Some properties are incurable. You see this happen in certain areas of cities. There are certain areas that have become blighted or worn down or old. And there are typically a lot of vacant properties that may be sitting in that area. And you look at that house and go, well, geez, that's a big, huge mansion that's sitting vacant. Well, the problem is it is so physically deteriorated that the cost to bring it back to standards way exceeds the value that the house could sell for because of the area of town it's sitting in. You got what I'm saying? It's incurable. Yes, I could put a new roof on it, but it's sitting in an area of the city that nobody wants to be in. The crime rate is high. It's a tough area. And if I put 15 grand in it, I'm not going to get it back because no one wants to buy the house to begin with. So physical deterioration could be curable or could be incurable. Now, <clears throat> the second type of deterioration 
is what is called functional obsolescence. Obsolescence means that it is outdated or outmoded or outdesigned. It is now not the current in vogue concept. A great example would be a house with a one car garage. In the 50s and 60s, that was the common home to build because families only had one car. Now that people look at this house and go, dude, I like the house, but where am I going to park my two cars? It has become functionally, meaning it still works, but it is not the preferred method. A two bedroom home could be functionally obsolete. So those functional obsolescence can be curable. It's possible that it could be curable. More likely than not, it is incurable. Hey, I can't add more room. I can't add a third bedroom to this house. Uh, I cannot add a second car garage, either because of physical limitations or because the cost really doesn't change the value that much. So that's the second type of depreciation. The third one is always considered incurable, which is called external obsolescence, meaning it's something beyond the control of the current homeowner. A good example would be, let's say you owned a home and the highway has now built a new highway and they took your neighbor's property as part of the eminent domain to build the highway. Now your house backs up to the highway and we can go whole, through that whole thing. You lost value, right? Well, because of that cause being external, it's not you. It was the airport that did it. There's no way to cure that. You can't make them move the airport. That would be considered something beyond your control. That is external obsolescence. All right. So those are the three types of depreciation. How we calculate depreciation is another math e equation we get to play with today. <clears throat> when we calculate depreciation, we use this thing called straight line depreciation. So let's draw, see if I can get real fancy. straight line depreciation, meaning we have um, money on this end and time on this end. Actually, I want to do it differently. Let's put time here and money. So depreciation is calculated as the straight line, meaning That's a straight line. So what you have <clears throat> is the house worth something here. And then as time goes up by, it's now worth this. You know, in the beginning here where time is zero, but here at this point in time, the value is zero. This is a straight line depreciation. Straight line means it's the same every year. Real easy math to calculate. That's why. It is simply this equation. All right. It is the um, amount divided by this thing called the economic life. That looks bad. Get rid of that. So you see it's an L. Becomes the economic life. This amount is usually in dollars. And this amount is usually in years. According to the IRS, everything has an economic life. Like a computer, maybe it's three years. A roof, maybe 15 years. 
parking lot, maybe 12 years. The good part about this is in the uh, test, they're going to tell you, okay? So let's do an example. Let's say this house is a value of $225,000. And the economic life of this house is given to you to be, I'm going to make this number up and I'm going to do it for ease of calculation. Remember, it could be whatever the question on the exam tells you. Could be three years, could be five years, could be 12 years, could be 23 and a half. I think in the real world, Houses are like 26 and a half years, all right? But what I'm going to do here is use this number of 22 and a half years. And I hope you see why I chose that number. So what I'm telling you is the depreciation is $10,000 per year, right? 225,000 divided by the economic life of 22 and a half gives us this $10,000 per year. So what that means is after one year, we could draw our little paragraph. And if you don't know how these work, you go up to that line and bounce off and go over to there. What is that new value of that property? Well, the new value after one year is 215,000 because it depreciated $10,000 per year. So therefore, after one year, it has lost $10,000. That's this amount right here. So the new value is now 215. So what would be the value? What's the value after 10 years? What is the value of this property after 10 years? Well, 10 years times $10,000 per year means it has depreciated $100,000. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, go up to there, you bounce over to that value there. And now the value on this is $125,000 because the depreciation is a hundred grand. That is straight line. It is the value amount of the item you're talking about divided by its economic life. That calculation would tell you how much the depreciation is per year. And then you would just multiply that by the number of years, subtract that from the original amount and you get the new value. Okay, that is what we are talking about when we talk about calculated on a straight line basis. Calculated on a straight line basis. The cost approach is used for special buildings, schools, churches, public. And remember, it does take into consideration so let's go back and I'm going to change the story here because what I want to show you is this. Let's say this property started out at 275,000, but the land was worth 50,000 and the structure This is where we got the 225 from. Because remember, step one is you subtract out the value of the land. 
Now we get this new value after 10 years. Here's our value after 10 years. But we got to add the land back in. So the value we come up with is $175,000. See, step one, we subtracted out the value of the land to get the structure. And in the cost approach, you only use the structure. Then when you subtract the depreciation, you add the land back in, and there is the appraised value of that property. That is called the cost approach.